This is a t completely unscripted uh, response to some questions for atheists, 10 questions every atheist must answer. Really important questions, right? This guy's obviously put a lot of thought into uh, copy and pasting these questions from various religious websites, whatever. Anyway, for number one. Let's go through them. I, I'm going to do the first six. I transcribed the questions because this video was just getting boring to watch repeatedly. But anyway, number one, I'm just going to do the first six, and maybe I'll do the seven to ten afterwards. If there's a God, or sorry, if there's no God, why is there anything at all? There's no God, why is there anything at all? No, nope. I definitely don't know the answer to that one. But then neither do you. Question two. Where is the evidence that life could have begun without intelligent interference? That life could have begun, well it's called physics and chemistry. Right? It's called... Um, Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of space and time and planets. Um, endless, endless amounts of atoms interacting in following certain rules. Um, chances are pretty high as far as I can see that, that life is going to, or, or replicating molecules are going to occur sooner or later. Um, in order to get life, you've only got to get replicating molecules um, which is incredibly incredibly unlikely in this much space over a week and a half uh, under the current conditions but if you look at it on a much bigger scale for the entire universe over billions of years under lots of different conditions then I don't know it seems it might be a little bit more likely that life could come around so could it could it occur um, the evidence is yeah because look around there's life obviously wherever life occurred um, uh, or wherever intelligent life occurred it's gonna look like wow we're in this favorable place for life to occur well yeah because it wouldn't have occurred anywhere else so it what's the evidence well the evidence is we know how things work we know how physics and chemistry works we don't know how life started Maybe we will figure it out one day. There's about 14 hypotheses, but it's very difficult to prove them. Um, all you could do is really prove that they would be plausible and, and, and obey the laws of physics and chemistry. Question three. How can evolution explain features of irreducible complexity apart from intelligent inter intervention? And then he goes on to go on about wings. How the hell could wings evolve? Because that's, yeah, that's really difficult to imagine. Wings. How the hell could that give you an advantage? Hmm. How could the intermediate stages from legs to wings confer an advantage? Yeah, that's, that's a real brain tickler. So, where, where do people get these stupid questions from? Like, how, how can they ask them and not, in the instant they're asking them, think of the answer, because they're so blindingly obvious. Irreducible com complexity has been blown out of all on multiple times on various YouTube videos. Um, it is an idea I think banded about by Michael Behe and his book, which I have, and I've started to read, uh, which is Darwin's Black Box. There are no demonstra demonstra there are no demonstrable examples of irreducible complexity that anyone's come up with yet. Bacterial flagellum, no. There's lots of uh, examples on YouTube showing the intermediate stages. Possible pathways, obviously we don't know the real pathways and it'd be very difficult to gather that evidence. But as long as you can demonstrate a possible, plausible pathway, um, then, you know, there's no problem in the theory. Wings, 
that's ridiculous. It's so easy to, to postulate a way that wings could have been useful. And all the precursors to wings. Number four. Oh, look, evolution again. Because evolution is the enemy of retarded beliefs. How can the evolutionary model be true since the fossil record clearly shows most major groups emerging at the same time? Cambrian explosion, da da da. I don't know. What's that got to do with anything? What's that got to do with God? What's that got to do with atheism? And why are you getting so hung up on evolution? Number five. If there's no objective standard of right and wrong, how can anything be wrong? Because uh, it causes pain or suffering. There's your answer. Okay? So we deem it to be wrong because we are social animals that live in social groups and we have to be social so we don't want to piss each other off because people bear grudges so we try not to piss each other off or if we're going to piss people off we make sure we do it anonymously by sneaking in and stealing their stuff we don't advertise it because people bear grudges so stealing is wrong because there's a social contract in it if people know that you steal they're going to get pissed off of you isn't it? We've got systems set up to punish people that steal, right? Clearly, a society doesn't function very well if people are just doing whatever they feel like. So, morals kind of grease the wheels of society. There's no objective standard of right and wrong. Go to different cultures. They're all different. Plenty of things in one culture will be uh, taboo in other cultures, will be wrong, will be punishable by beheading in some cultures. You know, heaven forbid you uh, to drink alcohol and walk around the streets in a pair of shorts. You know, that might cost you your head in one country. So obviously morals are um, different among different cultures. Crappy question number six. Which is the logically defensible position that matter eternally existed or else it came into existence all by itself for no reason and then arranged itself into extraordinarily complex systems? Well, it's already extraordinarily complex rules before you start worrying about complex systems. So for a lot of people, that instantly says, oh, God did it, there must be something behind it. It is, and it, it will be an eternally baffling question of why is there anything at all rather than nothing? And did something come out of nothing? And these are questions that may or may not be within the realms of scientific inquiry. My answer is, I don't know and I know that you don't know either so the fact that I can't explain why there's something or what was before something or what was the first cause lends no more credence to your crappy arguments about there being a magic sky daddy than, um, than anything else does so there's my first six questions out of the way maybe I'll plow through the rest of them but come on get some better questions these are Crap.